often in real life in the case of Mr. Shatner. But now the moment is there, the moment you're really going to space, and I can assure you that it will be better than your best imagination. No day passes by that we don't look back on this journey without having a smile from ear to ear. Have a safe flight and enjoy. Greetings from your youngest predecessor, Oliver Damon. Astronaut. New Shepard astronaut Wally Funk said, said, I, I love that, that part in one of the notes where they said, look, when you, when you go on one of these flights, you become part of the Blue Origin team and really the Blue Origin family. And that is really, you know, how we think about every single astronaut on that vehicle today. You're very special to us. You are going to have the flight the ride of a lifetime. Uh, you, are, you are living our own dreams through you guys, so soak it in. Now, we are at T-minus 15 minutes to go until launch. We are in a hold here, but as we have a moment, as we tick down to launch, why don't we get to know the man that many of you are here to see, William Shatter. I'm going up into space. Uh, I don't know how many people can say that. It's life-changing in its way. Not because of the aerial adventure, but because of the people I'm meeting and talking with. I'm glad to be here. Jeff Bezos' concept to make living and building in space and to make pollution a thing of the past. I mean, what noble ambitions those are, and somebody has to start it. Lines upright. We're just at the beginning, but how miraculous that beginning is. How extraordinary it is to be part of that beginning. There is this mystique of being in space and that much closer to the stars and being weightless. I shall be entranced by the view of space. I want to look at that orb and appreciate its beauty and its tenacity is sustaining this life of ours, which allows us to, and it looks like there's a great deal of curiosity about this fictional character, Captain Kirk, going into space. So let's go along with it and enjoy the ride.
15 minutes and 50 seconds. <sighs> Let's like this is this is what rocket launches are about. It is really exciting and I I'm just happy to be sharing this moment with you, Jackie. I am too, and I'm also very happy to see continually smiling faces out of those capsule windows. That is great sign for me. Oh, wow, God. Oh. Pretty cool. <laughs> what I've just been through, I've been dreaming about all my life. Let's hope that many, many more people can do this, because this experience you should share with more and more people. It's so amazing. down there. Uh, those are the aft fins. Those are going to uh, move back and forth. We want to make sure that they've got full freedom in, of movement. Also, what you're going to see at the base of the rocket, you can kind of see it's a little hard in this image. You're going to see the engine nozzle gimbal. The, the engine moves back and forth. It also uh, helps with the directional capability of the rocket on ascent, but also especially on descent as it comes in to land on the landing pad just two miles north of where it's taken off from. And then of course, you've seen throughout the morning the rocket venting. We, it's full of propellant at this point, but we wanna make sure that we keep the propellant, the propellant tanks within bounds, of course, of pressure and temperature. This morning, a little bit easier to do that uh, uh, versus our last flight, which was in the middle of July. It was warmer. It's actually a nice, uh, a nice balmy morning here down in West Texas. But again, we've got our team who have their eyes on their computer screens, making sure that everything is in, within bounds. And there goes the gantry retracting at T minus two minutes. Let's listen in. There go the aft fin checked at the base of the rocket. Our astronauts can feel that. They are sitting at the top of a 60 foot rocket, about 20 meters tall. T minus one minute. And there you can just see Slightly there, the gimbling engine at the base of the rocket. All right, everybody. Chris Boss has and Glenda Breeze, Audrey Powers, and William Shatner are about to go where very few humans have gone before. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to launch this rocket. Godspeed, New Shepard. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Command engine start. 2, 1. screen as well as the speedometer. They are gaining speed on their climb to space. We have confirmed max Q. This is when the, ma the, the aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle were at their maximum.
Thank you again, everybody, for joining us live for New Shepard's second human flight with Audrey Powers, William Shatner, our customers, Glenn DeVries and Chris Bosshausen on board. They are well on their way to space so far. A nominal flight, a clean burn on our Blue Engine 3. New Shepard giving them a beautiful flight to space this morning. The rocket is climbing towards an altitude. We're aiming just over the Kármán line, the internationally recognized line of space of 100 kilometers. That is about 328,000 feet and a gorgeous view down the rocket. And now we've had main engine cut off. The BE-3 engine has shut off. And in just a moment, we're going to separate the capsule from the booster. And at that point, our astronauts will have the opportunity to get out of their harnesses and enjoy the beauties of zero G. Let's wait to listen. And there you can see a clean separation between the capsule and the booster. And there you can see the capsule from the top of the booster. They are continuing their ascent over the Kármán line. You'll know when they hit apogee when the speed hits zero. And there they are, over 328,000 feet, over 100 kilometers. Welcome to space. The newest astronauts on board our crew capsule. And there they are, they have hit, just about hit their apogee at about 351,000 feet. And while we don't have apogee, I can just imagine Jackie, they are having the time of their lives. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us live from West Texas. So far, a nominal flight for our second human crew. So exciting, Jackie, to have sent Captain Kirk himself, William Shatner, to space. I cannot wait to hear his commentary upon return, as well as our two customers, Chris Bosshausen from Australia, to all the fans turning it, tuning in from uh, down under. A big shout out to you guys, as well as Glenn DeVries and our very own Audrey Powers. They are coming back home. The booster, of course, is going to beat the capsule back home. It is more aerodynamically shaped, of course, at the base of the, the capsule. It's kind of a, a blunt end, so it's less aerodynamic. What we're going to see coming up shortly is at the top of the rocket, we have the ring fin. The, uh, the, there is uh, some what we call the pie fins that extend from the ring fin. Uh, as well as the drag brakes, the the, uh, the pie fins, the wedge fins, help stabilize the vehicle, uh, like kind of like the feathers at the back of an arrow. And then uh, you will also see the drag brakes. And as you mentioned, Jackie, it cuts the velocity dramatically. There you can see the wedge fins are out.
Here we see the descent. We are going to expect the BE-3 engine to relight just at about 3,600 feet or about 1,200 meters above ground level. Let's wait for that now. The drag brakes have deployed. And here we come, New Shepard. <laughs> provided a beautiful flight to space for our second human crew. Wow, I, I, that gets me every time we do this live down here in Texas. The sonic boom is so cool. Drag brakes are folding back in, as have the wedge fins. Just looks like you could uh, fuel her up and go again. What do you think, Jackie? And even when you know to expect the sonic boom, it still catches you off guard every time. Talk about a rumble. A beautiful sight of our new Shepard rocket there in the West Texas desert. But of course, the show is not over. The capsule is descending. We are waiting for first the drogue break, excuse me, the drogue chutes to deploy. Those are very much like the guide parachutes. They will subsequently be uh, followed by the, uh, the main parachutes that will fully, that will full, first reef and then fully inflate. And there go the drogue parachutes. And here come the mains. Whew, what a flight. <laughs> you can already start to hear the cheers from outside the, our, uh, our stage here in West Texas. And here comes our crew back into the desert. Everybody. Newest astronauts 596, 97, 98, and 99. That's unlike anything you'll ever feel. Well, ever feel Stand by touchdown. Stand by touchdown. And capsule touchdown. Welcome back. The newest astronauts, Audrey Powers, William Shatner, our customers, Glenn DeVries, and Chris Poshausen. What a day for you. Welcome back. I cannot wait to talk to them, Jackie, and just get what they experienced up there this morning. What a clean and beautiful flight from the rocket for our astronauts. What an absolutely stunning flight. And I also loved hearing that audio of them on their way back about how this experience was for them. And I can't wait to hear their stories. Well, you, you heard William Shatner say, this is like nothing I've ever experienced before. So coming from a man who in theory has experienced space who for has decades. gone warp speed and traveled the entire intergalactic universe. <laughs> this was like nothing he's ever seen before. What a day for our astronauts. So now our team is preparing landing safety operations and recovery of our astronauts from the crew capsule. We'll be on the ground at the landing site to follow the action in just a bit, maybe even talk to the world's newest astronauts. Some absolutely breathtaking stuff. And I'll note that you're gonna see our, uh, the recovery team show up very shortly because we actually send them out before the capsule has landed because through our modeling, we get very, by now we're very, very good at analyzing where the capsule is going to come down, very given where precise we know. on that land. Exactly, where, where the winds are. 
And so we're going to see the recovery team come out there. And of course, they will also be joined by some of their friends and family to watch as they emerge from the capsule. Let's check out these beautiful shots of our four astronauts there in the Texas desert after having gone up over the Kármán line and back. And here's some beautiful shots of our four astronauts in the capsule awaiting the recovery team. I understand from Capcom that they have had communications with those four astronauts and they have all given the thumbs up that they are doing A-OK -okay after an exhilarating, exhilarating flight to space and back. Awaiting that recovery team in that champagne shower, which yes. I'm now regretting that we don't have any champagne for ourselves, <laughs> Ariane. That feels very unfair after this show. <laughs> There's some waves from, uh, from our astronauts there. And there in the foreground, you see the capsule, the background, the ride to space, the New Shepard booster. Again, that booster has flown to space and back four times with this flight. And coming to get them is the recovery crew And Jackie, you can see there, again, beautiful shots of the capsule. The parachutes actually have fallen pretty close to the capsule itself, meaning that there isn't a lot of ground wind out there. We talked about this earlier in the show, and of course we had to delay uh, a day because of the, the gusty winds that have been out there. But no, today has been a beautiful day for a launch and landing of a rocket and launch and landing of four new astronauts. I know we were talking to Chris a couple days ago, and he actually flew that USB full of music from around the world to space. As you mentioned, he's a DJ. So, of course, we have our new astronauts. We have our Club for the Future postcards that have just returned from space. And, of course, you know, some of the personal items like this awesome, this awesome, awesome USB full of music. I wish we could be playing some of that right now. Well, you probably will soon. Actually, yes. you know, as we mentioned, Chris Bosshausen uh, uh, has kind of a side gig as a as a DJ, D DJ Crispy, and he uh, actually released an album on Friday, and uh, I can't wait to see what he does with that music. Some musicians on board too. Of course, William Shatner. Everybody knows him as an actor. He also sings. I think that's the, one of the most beautiful things about what we're doing at Blue Origin. Again, opening the door to more people to go to space. Yes, the scientists, yes, the engineers, but now the artists, poets, let's, singers, DJs, let's just see what they create coming out of this experience. We have said it before, going to space changes you. We've talked about the overview effect, and I, I can't wait to see how the, the, the stories that come out of, and, and the art that comes out of this. All right, we now have Sarah Knight, going around the capsule, getting the thumbs up from each of our astronauts.
Thank you again, everybody, for joining us live from West Texas, where we have just completed our second human flight of the new Shepard vehicle, our crew on board, the great William Shatner, now who has become the oldest person to have ever flown to space at the ripe age of 90 years old, our very own Audrey Powers, as well as our two customers, Glenn DeVries and Chris Bosshausen. Our recovery crew is out there and is about to open the hatch. There is our founder, Jeff Bezos, giving the big thumbs up. Shot I remember seeing recently. Yes. <laughs> a very happy birthday. Woo! Yes. <laughs> <Audrey>! <laughs> Woo! And here Audrey! come their friends and family. Guys. Again, thank you everybody for joining us live from West Texas at our launch site one. Our second human space flight crew has gone to space and back up over the Carmen line just over 351,000 feet. We're awaiting Jeff Bezos, who is now opening the hatch. Audrey Powers, a big hug from her sister, <laughs> Captain Kirk himself, the great William Shatner. <laughs> Our customer, Chris Bosshausen, the first full Australian citizen to go to space and back, and Glenn DeVries. Some big hugs from their loved ones. That's what I thought. You have to work on it. It's so hard to describe. You have to work on it because not only is it different than what you thought, it happens so quickly. You know what my, my the impression I had that I never expected. <laughs> expected to happen. Uh, is you shooting up? Oh my God! Give me a this blue bottle. Come here. I want one. I want to hear this. Here. You want a little of this? Hey. <laughs> Well, 
<laughs> the champagne showers have begun. Smiles all around. William Shatner taking in the moment clearly. <laughs> what you have built. If everybody in the world needs to do this. Everybody in the world needs to see the, um, Oh my God. <laughs> so it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, you know, the, the little things of weightlessness. But to see the blue cover go whip by, and now you're staring into blackness. That's the thing.